love how that sounds. So good. So good. It does tickle my fancy just a little bit, if I have to do say so myself. You know, a lot of times when you do stuff like that, and you know, so you know, a lot of times it's subjective. To me, it sounds really good, not because I spent the whole cat back's worth of money on just one small custom exhaust piece. This car, compared to a lot of other SHOs I've heard, definitely sounds different. I like the sound, uh, I find it very pleasing, and we're definitely gonna make it better. And we're gonna have some of that, uh, hopefully, very soon. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I have another date to take the car back to Wits End Fabrication, and uh, that's gonna be here this upcoming Monday, April 5th. So I could take it back, have them get the car up on the lift, and take a peek, see how much room we have to work with under there, to uh, add a little bit extra pipe to the piece back there. So if you've been following me on this whole exhaust project here, you've already seen me make some videos about adding extra pipe in the form of a trombone loop just as Ford did with the new Raptor. That's why I have to take it to Wits End and have the professionals look at it and hopefully we can get something that uh, will work and fit nicely and not cause any other issues and I think we can. So yes, it's very exciting things that are uh, happening here. Though I am going there uh, Monday to have them look at it, they're not actually doing any work. It's basically just for estimate purposes. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too much. Theoretically, it shouldn't be. They should be able to do it with a couple, you know, 180 bends and straight putt pieces. They shouldn't have to do anything too intricate that would create more hours of labor into the project. So I'm, I'm hoping we, we stay under four digits this time. I'm hoping about half that. If, if you want me to be honest with you, because I can't make it work as quickly as I would like to if it's more than what that's gonna be. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not rich, so. And if, honestly, if it wasn't for uh, credit lines, half the stuff wouldn't even be possible. You know, that was kind of one thing I really learned when I worked in, in car sales. It taught me a lot of really good, I guess, life lessons. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess it depends who you are. Some people don't want credit debt. You know, I've learned a lot from just entrepreneurs and, and uh, you know, teachers of successful businesses and whatnot. There's good debt and there's bad debt. So it's not necessarily debt's bad. It's just what kind of debt ends up being what's bad. And if it wasn't for the credit lines that I have, and that's the thing, in car sales, when customers would get cold feet or something, they would be unsure about, you know, affording a vehicle. You know, it's not like I pressured them into buying a vehicle they didn't want, they were looking at the vehicle they wanted. It just happened to be something a little bit more expensive than they would used to be spending. So, but what you, what you end up telling them, and, it, and it's the truth, it applied to me when I bought my vehicle. You're not buying. You're not buying the vehicle as a whole. You're not paying. You know, for in my case, it was like the the whole vehicle was seventeen thousand dollars. But then by the time you add it, your extra coverages, whatnot, and then the interest from the loan. So let's say twenty thousand dollars. It's not like I just wrote a check for twenty grand that day to the dealership. No, the number you focus on is what you pay a month. Your monthly payments is what you're paying. So. It could be a $100,000 car, it doesn't matter. If you can afford your monthly payments, you can afford that car. And that's kind of the benefit to being able to finance things. You can afford things you wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. And that's kind of how I've made my way through all of these projects with the cars here is because I've, you know, I have a few credit lines I utilize and, you know, I try to use them as responsibly as possible. And that way I can basically make all my big purchases flexible. You know, I can take $2,000 worth of car parts and only pay a hundred bucks a month for, or, or whatever. You know, I could pay it back at my convenience, though to the expense of whatever the interest cost. That's the, that's the whole thing about financing. But regardless of all that, it's, you know, I still didn't even want to spend too much more on this exhaust. I really just want to kind of get it dialed in though. I am so proud of myself and, and the whole piece, you know, I think it's a beautiful piece. Um, just from the work that Whitson has done, I, I love looking at it. I would love to, 
show it off. You know, it's not something you see on a Ford Taurus, let alone most cars, you know. So I think it's a very cool showpiece. Um, and I basically just want to have the best sound the SHO. Well, this generation of SHO. You know, that's the thing. That's the, there's a lot of people who put their mark on the, on the SHO community, you know, by making certain parts or whatnot, because the thing is, this is a very unloved platform from, you know, the big, big aftermarket uh, manufacturers and, and companies. Not to say that all of them don't support it. You know, there's, there's a lot of the bigger companies that support, but they don't support it to the full extent that this platform needs. That's the thing. Like, you know, generally, yeah, you get turbo upgrades or you get small things here and there, but you really don't get any of the important stuff. And it's really only been that the, the community that surrounds this platform has developed much needed parts for this car. And to me, one of the biggest lacking components of this whole platform is a proper sounding exhaust. Basically all of the major exhaust companies make something for this car in terms of a cat back exhaust. The problem is to me, they all sound like crap. They all sound pretty much the same, you know, and they all pretty much sound no better than a muffler delete on a stock system. There's really small benefits in performance with a cat back system. You know, it's not like major, major things, especially with a stock turbo car. So if you're just looking to get a little bit of extra sound, you know, I just don't think that's the way to go because it just, to me, the sound that those exhaust systems make, it's just not good. It, it doesn't make this engine sound the way I think this engine should sound. With that said, I think even the first generation uh, Ford, the EcoBoost Raptor had a much more unique exhaust note than the SHO with a any of the traditional catbacks you know I think Ford did a really good job tuning the exhaust on that and especially now with the 2020 or up in Raptors with the revised exhaust and including this trombone loop to create equal length pipes that that sounds like a performance V6. I personally love the sound of a V6. You know, I think a V6 is probably your most exotic sounding engine without getting into 10 and up cylinder engines that are pretty much exotic engines. And that's the thing. If you give them the right exhaust, you have a very unique sound. You know, I would always love the sound of, of, the, of a proper exhaust on a VQ. Um, car or even the old VR six cars with the proper exhaust I think they would just sound so good and then you got more modern cars like the GTR R35 GTR and even when freaking Ford decided to you know bring back the Ford GT with the EcoBoost and it sounded awesome only with the titanium exhaust though the normal Ford GT no titanium exhaust yes <laughs> You know, it just sounded good. It sounded exotic. It sounded the way it needed the sound. It sounded how you would expect it to sound. The sound matched the performance. That's my thing. I want to make an exhaust that matched, that the sound matches the performance of the car or the vehicle. That's the whole project. That's the whole thing. Everyone who's been following this thing, that you know, this has been my goal ever since first creating it because no one's ever done such a thing. Because it is, it is a very odd and, and weird piece. Um, you know, I don't think most people would even think of it in the first place. It took a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth ideas before I even came up with the first prototype of, of that exhaust. I mean, I was drawing on, the, on pieces of paper, different designs, until I ended up seeing how the exhaust was on the new Ford GT. You know, I was just trying to see what made those cars sound so good and considering it's the same engine but it sounds differently and while there is a little bit more to it than just the way the exhaust is routed including the type of material it's made out of but there was a lot of factors that can be replicated that went into creating that uh, that very unique tone so that's when i went to start uh, actually making drawings and stuff and came up with what was that first piece I put together. One of my most popular videos now, by the way, that has turned into this beautiful piece here crafted by Witsend, which is now gonna have its first revision 
adding this extra pipe creating essentially equal length um, system before it hits the next pipe. And I'm hoping that doing so is going to give that really beautiful, just kind of trumpety, burbly exhaust note. I tell you what though, I haven't done one of these vlog videos in what, a couple weeks or so? In fact, it kind of just feels good, something casual. Not, uh, <laughs> not busting my knuckles trying to get work done in film, so it's kind of nice. I'm actually here sitting in the parking lot, about to go into Harbor Free again. <laughs> I goofed on the whole ignition setup on the Fox body. Again, <laughs> I need to buy more stuff, more heat shrink, more connectors. I used them all. I, I, used, I went through all of it because um, I thought I was going to, you know, I keep doing it like I'm, you know, setting up for a permanent installation and I realize I screw up. So basically all of it goes to waste. But thankfully, Harbor Freight's got some deals going on today for some of that stuff. So it works for me. I'll go in here, get what I need, and I'll come back and finish up this video. So I finally picked up myself a much needed new flashlight. Needed that. I uh, got more heat shrink and electrical connectors. And I was really happy to find this. I really was um, looking for these. Well, I mean, looking to get these perhaps, not looking for this specifically. But uh, I love my Icon metric sockets I use, but they're, they're deep wells. So sometimes, you know, just to get something, in, it's kind of like in a small spot, you can't fit a deep well in it. Or if I wanted to use the impact and it's in a tight spot, the deep well might be just a shade too long to fit the impact in there. So I needed some uh, regular shallow sockets. Um, and these have been freaking fabulous, man. I love this Icon uh, brand from um, Harbor Free. You know, it's you know more expensive than their Pittsburgh stuff, but it's actually really nice, really nice tools. It's open box, the only one's missing 17, which I never, ever use, ever. The most important one in there, 10. <laughs> so uh, it was like almost $10 off. It was like 30, yeah, it was like 38 bucks new and 27.98 open box. I can't complain, come on. That's some fun stuff. You know, I've definitely have been, uh, getting accustomed to being a pretty frequent shopper here at Harbor Freight. Um, they've come a long way, man. They really have. You know, a lot of their tool lines now are much nicer. Um, you're paying a little bit more for it, but you're getting a nice tool. You know, the thing is you got, you can pay like five bucks for one of their tools or you can pay 15 bucks for that one tool from one of their different product lines. And it's gonna be just as good as any premium brand of tool you'll find and then you know there's going to be a lot of the well you know it's not made in america but, uh, i'm all in for supporting you know american workers and stuff but when american brands are charging a premium for their products i don't think it has anything to do with being american you know is i think it's just like a designer name but if you are a 100 percent die hard snap on user you probably also have an iphone an imac uh ipad an, an i whatever as well because it's the same type of thing you probably also wear gucci stuff madden apparel you know it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing you are paying for the name you know it's like the brand tax you get for it i don't think it has anything to do with it costs more to make it here or it's cheaper to make it there you know, I'm sure something plays in part to it, but not not as big of a markup as they put on some of these products. It's just ridiculous, really. If you are into music at all or whatever, you've heard of Gibson guitars. Everyone, and even if you're not into music, you probably heard of Gibson guitars. Same thing. Literally, they have such a stupid brand tax on on those, and they're great instruments. But you can get a nice instrument or better from a different brand. Same thing when you come to tools. It has, it doesn't have as much to do with the, the price being more because you're paying because it's in America than you were just paying a brand tax. And, and quite honestly, I don't want to support a company that has a brand tax because you're just ripping off your customers. You really are. With that said, I'm pretty happy with, with most of my stuff at Harbor Freight. And as long as Harbor Freight doesn't do anything too screwy, you know, I'll be a I'll be a happy supporter of their products. So, well, uh, we'll leave that at that.
Man, I was really hoping to get some stuff done today, but it looks like we have some rain. I mean, it was calling for it, it really was, but it didn't show up until now. I mean, it said it was supposed to rain all morning, and it didn't. It was actually pretty nice up until about 11 o'clock and it started getting cloudy. Eh, whatever. Since there isn't much to do, I guess this would be a good time to uh, wrap up the video. So with that said, that is it for this vlog video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next video. Oh man, everything's so wet.